title Australia's sports capital definitely belongs to Melbourne. On the village green, more sedate members of the community enjoy a little cricket. Melbourne sport, though, is not always the property of the genteel classes. The sport of kings reaches its zenith in spring. It is the Melbourne Cup. This is a mixture of Bacalian riot and high fashion, showing the Australian distaste for class consciousness. The lofty and the not-so-lofty rub shoulders in a day of revelry and very serious racing. Watched by a world television audience of 80 million people, it's Australia's premier sporting fixture. This encourages a huge and enthusiastic following being trackside. They have flocked to Flemington, home of the Melbourne Cup since the 1860s, and each consecutive year it seems they attempt to outstep the excesses of the previous one. Countless millions are bet on the Melbourne Cup, and a $2 million purse awaits the lucky winner. The pundits meet in serious debate. The bookies bag rarely closes. The field glasses are raised. And in every corner of the nation, people stop while another four-footed hero runs itself into Australian history, fame, and sometimes indeed, if the odds are right, the eternal love of the people. Fever is an insufficient description for the passion which grips Melbourne every winter when 14 teams play that odd game of football which Melbournians invented themselves. At the end of the season, young and old with reverential devotion, gather en masse to pay homage to those finest 40 gladiators who will stage the greatest game of all, the Aussie Rules Grand Final. Held each year on the famous Melbourne Cricket Ground, it attracts 100,000 fanatical and excited spectators to the fastest, most dangerous, high-flying football you're ever likely to witness. And his ghost may be heard as you pass by the billabong. Really, have lost the string at the moment. This is Curran, long down towards the full forward area. Play on, said the umpire, as it's uh, young Collins again. Good play by the young fella. Off he comes. That's 85 degrees Fahrenheit, in fact. Oh, he's got and, and, and virtually both sides without one wingman, but this wingman is... Meanwhile, those who couldn't this year secure a grand final ticket have retreated to a quiet television set in one of Melbourne's numerous fine old hotels. Charming buildings from the turn of the century, they serve what many locals boast to be the world's very finest beers and ales. In recent years, Melbourne has seen the introduction of boutique breweries, such as the famous Loaded Dog. There, a connoisseur can savour in a cordial atmosphere over 20 renowned draft beers and raise glasses to compare one of the six fine old-style brews that are lovingly prepared on the premises.
Later, one could find us with newfound friends in one of Melbourne's numerous fine restaurants. Melbourne eateries are thicker on the ground than any other Australian city and reflect not only the availability of excellent food, but the truly cosmopolitan makeup of her citizens. There are hundreds of restaurants. They vary in national origin, price range and style. And they all strive to be that little bit better than their competition. The result is Melbourne being home to some of the finest restaurants in the country. Now Turek Road is a place to see and a place to be seen. This suburb is the playground of Melbourne's millionaires. It's a great place for a snack in the sun or a little promenade. Frankly though, here, be aware that if you're not chic, you're a tourist. This is not simply a playground of the wealthy, but it's also where they reside. A drive locally will reveal the palatial splendor in which some of us live. You might, if you're lucky, even look up a new mate that you met at the Melbourne Cup. If he told you he works in a bank, he probably forgot to mention that he also owns it. Night falls on marvellous Melbourne. A city lights up and the good people of Melbourne who have taken to the streets in one way or another decide to party. They socialise in a city renowned for its prestige night spots. A city indeed that boasts more nightclubs than New York. You could, for example, here, without leaving the central business area, sample 70 different nightclubs for as long as you could stay on your feet. Melbourne may have the regal splendour of a European city, but in summer, when the temperatures soar into the 30s and beyond, all Australians head to the beach. The white sands and clean, unpolluted waters make them the envy of many cities this size. It's a great way, too, for the holiday maker to relax, unwind and spend a day with the locals. Our Bayside coastline is a great place for sun lovers. The beaches here are all easily accessible from the city and some are close enough to reach by picturesque cycling tracks. Australian rivers are a lot like the locals themselves. They're usually bronze in colour, like the pace slow, and are decidedly easygoing. The beautiful Yarra is no exception. Like the River Seine in Paris, it divides the city into individual North Bank and South Bank areas, each with its own charm and style. Of course, this too has always been a recreation focus. 
Here, Melburnians enjoy themselves rowing, running, or sharing a shady picnic spot with friends. Given that the local labor movement invented the eight-hour day, it's little wonder people here spend most of their time finding new ways to enjoy their leisure. While travelling in one of Melbourne's famous trams, you're marvelling at a convenient, safe and inexpensive public transport system. And wonder why the town where you live hasn't got something like this. You're rattling past in one of the delightful old wooden vehicles. Staring out the window, you've fallen in love with a great new city. You've met new mates in a pub, dutifully fed swans on the lake and eaten a hot pie on a cold day at the footy. You've caught football fever. You love the stately bridges, the river, the gardens and the parks. After dark in one of the bohemian lounges, the jazz bars, the clubs, you've danced the night away and wonder now what tomorrow will bring in marvellous Melbourne.